I'm Judy Murray, and I'm often asked, what is a driving force? Well, it's something or someone who has the power to make things happen. I've seen firsthand just how far we've come in terms of levelling the playing field for female sports, and yet we still have so much ground to cover. On this journey, I'll meet some of our most successful sports stars, from football, rugby, netball, athletics, boxing, horse racing and motor racing and hear stories of dedication, determination, resilience and exceptional skill. My aim is to look at where we've come from, where we are now and at what the future holds. If you can see it, you can be it. I'm on my way to meet Katie Taylor. She is the undisputed lightweight world champion, Olympic gold medalist. She's even played football for the Republic of Ireland and she's a devout Christian. She has changed the face of women's boxing. She's raised the profile and encouraged many more women and girls to take part in the sport. But she was also the first female to be signed by promoter Eddie Hearn and fight on cards with the likes of Anthony Joshua. She's also shown that it's possible for women to have a career in boxing. Katie Taylor is an absolute machine. She's the target, she's the one that every girl boxer wants to beat and none of them can. When you think about how Katie has changed women's boxing, it's, it's immeasurable. She's probably done what Muhammad Ali done for male boxing. Katie Taylor has made it possible for a girl to dream that she can get to the top. The discipline that she has, I don't know whether I would have ever had that type of discipline that she has and that single-mindedness. Katie has paved the way. We're in her shadow and going behind her. She's well respected. She's a legend of the uh, of the sport. She's going to go down history as you know, probably the greatest of all time. My driving force behind women's boxing is led by those who inspire me. She's not just one of the greatest female fighters of all time, she's one of the greatest fighters of all time. Katie Taylor, undisputed world lightweight boxing champion, devout Christian, you have got the most amazing story. Can we go right back and talk about your childhood? I grew up in a rough area full of drugs. Um, my parents didn't have a lot of money growing up and I was a very, very happy child. I was involved in, in any sport I could, I could put my hands on really. Um, I, I was boxing, I was playing football, I was involved in Gaelic. Um, I felt a, a, a different sport every single day when I was growing up. She was very quiet as a child. Um, I used to probably finish her sentences for her sometimes. Um, trying to get words out of her was like pulling teeth at times. Um, she was very shy. Her involvement with sport as a, a, a child helped her to express herself. My dad was a boxer and uh, my two older brothers boxed as well. Uh, so boxing was just really pretty much in the family. From a very, very early age, when I was 10 or 11 years of age, that's, that's when I started, uh, started boxing. I, myself and my brothers would be messing around with the gloves on in, in the kitchen of our house. Um, I'd always pretend to be Rocky Marciano. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even know. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> I didn't even know who, who he was at the time, but I just knew that he was an undefeated champion. And, <laughs> and um, it was during that time when I felt God birthed this uh, dream of me that I was going to be, become an Olympic champion. I was training so hard every single day. Um, there wasn't a day that went by where I didn't actually think about that Olympic gold medal. When you were six, I think, so it must have been Barcelona Olympics, yeah. and somebody on your estate had a big screen in their garden, yeah. and all the kids were watching. You went home and stood on a chair yeah. and made your mum put on a pretend gold medal around your neck. Do you think that's maybe where the, the spark was lit? It was just something birthed in me from, from such a young age. I, I obviously grew up in a Christian household and um, I grew up uh, here and I know that God could do great things in your life. I just started to dream of God. I started to put my trust in a God who could, who could do absolutely anything. I started to dream about that Olympic gold medal even when women's boxing wasn't an Olympic sport. I just always believed that was going to happen for me. Was it your mum who discovered a faith yeah. and brought it into the family? What it brought into the house was a sense of calm. Mm. and. When I watch you box, that's 
what always impresses me so enormously yeah. is your sense of calm. Mm. So it's it's all linked. Tell me about Psalm 18. Psalm 18 is my favourite scripture of all time. Um, I actually read that Psalm as a 17 year old before one of my fights and um, I just felt like God was speaking to me directly that he wanted to give me a platform to, to display my gift. And um, ever since then, that, that's the Psalm that I read before every single one of my fights. David is actually one of my favourite ca characters in the Bible and that was a Psalm written by David. He's a famous uh, warrior king. I can just relate so much to everything that, that David writes. I think David would love your warrior spirit <laughs> too. <laughs> My faith is definitely the most important part about who I am. I, I really don't know what I would do without God in my life. It would be a scary me if I walked into the ring not knowing that God was on my side and not, not knowing that God was, was walking with me, really. Going into the ring, you are on your own. You know, your trainer's there, but they're on the outside. If you feel like someone else is watching out for you, even though you might physically be on your own, if you feel like spiritually there's, there's someone in that ring with you, that must be a huge help for a fighter. It's like an invisible weapon. That's exactly what As it is. As if these weren't enough. Yeah, yeah. But when, when you were starting out in boxing, you couldn't fight as a girl. You had to enter competitions under Kay Taylor. Yeah. Women's boxing wasn't actually allowed in Ireland when I started boxing as a 10 or 11 year old. And I was training away for years without actually getting a fight. Just with my headgear on down as Kay Taylor. But when I took the headgear off, there was obviously a lot of people who didn't want women boxing. and. Uh, I, I guess I had to break through the usual worries and concerns that people have when society is changing during that time. There are a lot of people like me who feel that women boxing is revolting. In England, it's just not recognised at all. I mean, we've tried so many times unsuccessfully to get the British Boxing Board of Control. So it's, it's a man's sport and it's, it's for men only. The British Boxing Board has no objection to women's boxing, provided it can be proved that a woman boxer is no more at risk than a male boxer. What about uh, the menstrual cycle? What about women's breasts? Are, are, is battering at them going to, going to help create cancer? What about the effect of punches to the head? Are women more susceptible than men? There are so many women's sports that haven't been acceptable <laughs> to men. Um, women's boxing, I think, was probably at the top of that list. I reached the top as a male promoter in boxing and you know I was ruthless if I'm honest female boxing didn't it wasn't that didn't appeal to me but being a professional promoter you have to make sure that your product can produce money and at that time female boxing didn't have the interest it had women's boxing used to be a little bit of a, a novelty act she changed that you know there were times when every now and again we might feature a female fight Virtually now on every show that we do, we have one, maybe two female fighters, and that's going to keep on increasing because of what Katie has done. There, there's definitely a lot of challenges and a, a lot of obstacles, but look at where women's boxing is right now. Was emphatic. She knew the power when it landed made the difference. You were 15, weren't you, before you could actually fight against yeah. another another female boxer, but you always had that belief that it would come. Women's boxing wasn't the sanctioned sport at the time. I was intensely trying to tear down, tear down those barriers even at a young age. I realised that the best way to actually speak was to, was to use my gift and, um, and I never looked back since. And more and more people then got to see me box. And eventually the doors just started opening. Where were you training? Were you training locally or were you part of some kind of national setup? No, I was just training in my local boxing club in Bray, uh, where my dad was actually the coach as well. It wasn't until years later that I went up to high performance, um, but at that time I was just training purely in, in, our, in my local boxing club. Because she played with boys and she hung around with lads and she played football with the lads on the road, um, I think she kind of probably learned the aggressive behaviour uh, as well. I was pretty much the only girl that, that I knew at Boxlot. The most amazing part about this journey right now for me is just that every single boxing gym in the country is packed with female boxers. You know, all the hard work, all the obstacles that I, had to, that I had to overcome. It's so much easier for the next generation of fighters coming up now and that to me is true legacy. I 
I just thought there's something wrong and there is a, there's a need here for something else to happen. First of all, it was 20 girls, and then it was 40 girls, and then it was 50 girls, and it was just growing more and more as we did it. Um, and then I thought, it needs to be something else. And for me, a boxer is a boxer. People will say to you, you box like a boy, like, or you box like a man, which I suppose you can take as a compliment, but we just want to all be able to um, get in there, spa, irrespective of um, gender. This Girl Can Box helps me with like my boxing because in the clubs I don't really get a lot of sparring and like I can't really get a lot of sparring outside so there's loads of girls here so it's good for me. Boxing gives you so much more than like fitness. The gym is like family because when you get in the ring your coach is in your corner and your coach is there to like bring out the best in you and, and protect you. It's been the best thing that's happened in my life basically. <laughs> I recommend that every parent and every uh, social care or uh, get their children to do boxing. They haven't got to compete, but learn to box, learn to defend yourself, because that builds, what builds your con confidence, your courage, and your high self-esteem, and develops you as a person. Katie Taylor is the epitome of female boxing. What that lady has done um, for, for the sport is immense, unbelievable. Everyone knows Katie Taylor and Nicola Adams. You ask any girl who's ever boxed, that's sort of their idol. She's really just an inspiration for, yeah, every girl. Yeah. As a business, we need to be representative of the people that we serve. Through Equal Play, we are currently supporting Ramla Ali, um, the first Somalian boxer who started her sister's club with a view to get women into boxing, um, Muslim women um, predominantly. We're working with her through Equal Play to basically arm themselves with the tools to become great boxers. You always need a role model, you always need an ambassador for young female athletes or fighters to say, I want to be like them. You know, I have two daughters, they love Katie Saylor. You know, they look up to her and that's the kind of role model I want my kids to have. This generation of fighters have definitely have uh, opened up a lot of doors for the next generation, but I'm also so grateful for the likes of uh, uh, Jane Couch, um, Leila Ali, uh, Lucia Riker, who's a phenomenal fighter. Uh, Christy Mart, uh, we're definitely standing on, on the shoulders of, of, of those giants. Turning it up. Oh, down goes Fogarty. Coming up next on Driving Force. Looking at the Olympic rings on my gear on Team Ireland, I, I was nearly like a pinch me moment. This is actually happening. The noise from the Irish contingent started off the English contingent, but it was a fight. Them girls fought like as if their life depended on it. T to be honest, I think that was one of the best fights I ever saw at the Olympics. <laughs> When you became part of the national performance setup, was that something that you did once in a while, or was that something that you started to do on a daily basis? I went on to high performance team maybe as a 17 year old, and they're obviously training full time from week to week. I was going in every now and then, but my dad was still training me full time as well. When I first went in there, um, they didn't really know uh, what, what to expect. They were thinking, is this going to be just a circus act? Soon enough, that they, they, they just treated me like any other boxer and that was incredible to me. From a very, very young age, I was training every single day. Um, I started training twice a day, six days a week. I really became a full-time athlete. The discipline that she has, I don't know whether I would have ever had that type of discipline that she has and that single-mindedness um, to achieve great things in sport. Um, I'm not too sure whether she got that from me, but um, I'd like to think that maybe some of it she did. Um, I definitely had to sacrifice an awful lot. I didn't have a normal childhood. All my friends from school were kind of going out on weekends. I never drank, for example, uh, growing up. And I think I'm probably the only Irish person that doesn't drink. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it doesn't quite yeah. fit with, with the Irish culture. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am a person who puts absolutely everything into the gym. And when I, when I do retire from the sport, I want to know that I've given everything, absolutely everything I, I, I've had over the years. When you were at school, 
you became a very good footballer. Mm. Football was obviously a huge part of my life as well and I absolutely loved it. I definitely love uh, love the team aspect of football and um, I'm still to this day so close. Uh, there's some of my best friends have come from, from my football days. I think individual sports suit me as well. You just learn so much more about yourself because in a certain sense you're boxing against yourself and aren't you? You're boxing against your own um, mental strength, you're boxing against your own limitations and um, I really feel like you learn so much more about yourself that, that I didn't learn through, through playing football. It's not just the sport of boxing, it's what the sport of boxing can instill. What local communities, what the government and what, what local politicians don't understand is the role that amateur boxing clubs can play within the community. If they focus more on those clubs, community clubs and all sports, that we, I would have so much more confidence in the next generation. My mantra is to embrace life's challenges one punch at a time. The barriers that we're finding with inclusion boxing is that accessibility into the gym and having coaches that are trained in adaptive boxing. This sport is for everybody. That is my job to make sure that everybody can be included. There's something about boxing, it's one-to-one, -one, but there's a community that's built up as well. I have a sense of community which I think I've sort of been missing a lot of my life. It's, like I say, it's probably due to my autism. I don't really join clubs or do stuff like that. But suddenly, with the Zoom classes and the gym work, although it's one-to-one, -one, there's a community as well, and I like that a lot. You see how well Louise is working, where she's coaching them. And I think it's well that her personality as well, she's a very warm person. She had her own setbacks in life, but you won't think that walking in today with, with a smile on her face. It might be rain outside, but it's full of sunshine in it. I'm a woman, I'm a disabled woman and even up to recent years a woman boxing wasn't heard of very much and if it was it was then frowned upon. So I knew that I had two challenges with this. We know from you know the hundreds and hundreds of studies how much it how much how important it is to see someone like yourself or someone do the thing that you do or someone to just to have that visibility of a woman being successful will, will help other women think that they can do it too. Certainly as a young girl growing up, I didn't have many role models. There wasn't many people that I could relate to. Katie Taylor's legacy will be in history forever. What she has done has closed the divide. When Katie Taylor steps into the ring, the audience don't see a woman, they see a boxer. And that's what Katie Taylor has done for this sport. You had 11 caps for <coughs> Republic of Ireland in mm. football. You played in the World Club qualifiers. Mm. You scored an unbelievable goal. At what point did football have to take a back seat? During my late years, while I was only playing um, international games, I wasn't playing even club football at the time. In the end, I just had to completely focus on boxing and it wasn't really a difficult decision for me. I knew that uh, boxing was going to be my sport. I was, I was now preparing and training for these Olympic Games. From then, I was uh, training twice a day, six days a week, um, all year round, basically. I mean, uh, you talk about sacrifices, I really didn't uh, um, have much of a life outside of boxing. I, I had to be constantly in the gym, I was so single-minded. There's obviously moments where uh, you think, oh, what, you know, what is this all about? It's all, uh, I feel like my whole life has been a complete training camp. It is very, very tough, but it's always worth it. It was particularly worth it when you lifted that um, gold medal. Tell me about about 2012, what did it feel like yeah. stepping into the ring for your first match there? It's actually incredible because um, when I was first putting my Olympic gear on uh, before the fight and looking at the Olympic rings on my gear on Team Ireland, I, I was nearly like a pinch me moment. This is actually happening. I remember that that, uh, that moment more than the actual fights. This is something that I dreamt of since a young girl. and. I actually have a chance to represent my country in, in, in the Olympic Games. It's such a special moment in boxing in front of 10,000 Irish people. The atmosphere was absolutely electric uh, during that competition and um, a childhood dream coming to pass, really. Did you not 
uh, beat the decibel level for those Olympics. Yeah, myself and Tasha John was boxing. It was, <laughs> it was an amazing atmosphere. The noise from the Irish contingent started off the English contingent, but it was a fight. Them girls fought like as if their life depended on it. T to be honest, I think that was one of the best fights I ever saw at the Olympics. Having women's boxing at the Olympics was was incredible. You know, I'd never seen coverage of women's boxing in mainstream media before. Nobody knew who we were before that. The, the only championships in, in, in amateur boxing that are ever televised are the Olympic qualifiers. For the first time ever, I actually thought female boxing could take off. After the Olympics of 2012, um, participation for females was like 60% increase after that because other females seen females being successful in, in a sport that they like to do. Standing on top of the podium and hearing the national anthem going up, looking at the tricolour flag go, you know, going up, just uh, just knowing that it wasn't just for me um, or my family, but every single person in Ireland, Ireland got to own a part of that medal as well. Just bringing so much pride to the country and that to me is absolutely everything. I'm just overwhelmed to be honest, like this is just incredible. Um, without the sport I'd be nothing and I just want to thank everyone for all the prayers over the last week. A great family behind me, a great team, Zara, Billy, my dad and you know I, I wouldn't be in this situation without them so thanks so much everyone, it's incredible. Coming up next on Driving Force. Entrance for the first time as a pro fighter was, was so, so special. The career of Katie Taylor as a professional will go down. She will go down as the greatest female fighter of all time. All the dedication and sacrifice that you put in through those teenage years there was also enormous dedication and sacrifice put in by your mum and dad, yeah. and they played very different roles yeah. in your career. I would definitely wouldn't be in the position that I am now without my parents. I've suffered many defeats, about well, some defeats in my career where they were absolutely heartbreaking. 2016 was a, an incredibly hard year for Katie. Um, the breakdown of the relationship with her father, we saw in the ring how it, how deeply it impacted her. Um, and for such a private person, that must have been an incredibly difficult time. My mum has been an absolute strength in that area. She's the one that I would always talk to. She's the one that was encouraging me. Um, my loss in the Rio Olympics, um, which was probably the most devastating loss of my career. She's the one that... Um, She was the one that um, that was just always there, always there. It was just such, just such a hard time. The build up to it was awful. The breakdown in family was just really hard to, um, just hard to cope with at the time. And obviously, the Olympics is a huge. It's a huge event. It's a huge thing. And the eyes of the world were, were, were on us as a family as well, which was difficult to, to deal with. It's difficult enough when you're dealing with it behind closed doors, but when you're dealing with things in the media. Um, and I just remember, you know, I can't believe we're still crying. <laughs> this is crazy. The hardest thing yeah. as a parent is when things go wrong. You know that you have a job as the parent to pick yeah. your child up yeah. again. And it's a very, very tough thing because as parents, we just want everything to go right for our kids. Yeah, exactly. And um, I guess um, at the time was a, a very, very 
a tough time for us as, as a family as well. I was dealing with the, the, the heartbreak of of um, my dad not being there as well. And um, my dad um, decided to, to walk away from the family and um, that was just a devastating moment for the family. And I'm just as grateful for those failures in my career as I am for the victories because that that is how you learn and grow, isn't it? Real wounds, yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it, I think I said that I would have given anything to have been able to just to be able to have been able to take that pain for and I, I, I knew I couldn't so it's kind of just trying to stand with them you know stand with her and try and just ease it a little bit and hold her up I just remember going over to her the following morning and she came out to meet me and she just burst into tears It was awful. Here I am at the pinnacle of my pro career right now, and um, in some ways, it was probably the best thing that, that could have happened to me, that, that loss, of, but it obviously doesn't feel like at the, at the, at the time. I really did change my life. I obviously didn't have a clear path. I didn't know what, what was going to happen next. My mom was just telling me just to put one in front of the other, just keep working hard, and that's exactly what I did. And, um, and here I am a few years later uh, as the undisputed champion of the world. Katie Taylor! The way that Katie Taylor boxes, I think the best way to describe it is she fights like a Mexican. Wow. Big right hand. Nice combination. I don't think we'd really seen a female fighter with that kind of hand speed before. When you think about how Katie has changed women's boxing, it's, it's immeasurable. If you have to be convinced about women's boxing or whether it's right or wrong or you like it or you don't like it, just watch Katie Taylor. Katie Taylor! What led you to Ross in a mate? I just wasn't enjoying my sport. I needed a change. I went over to Ross for a few weeks for a training camp. I actually got got in touch with him through, through Twitter. Would you believe? Thank God for Twitter. And I just asked him, could I go over for a training camp? And how but, did you how did you know him? My dad used to have all these books. Actually, he was a great strength and conditioning coach, great boxing coach as well. And um, and I I actually had all my all these books uh, in, in my house even from a child. So in some sense, that Ross was always there. I guess I didn't know him as a person at all. I, I just got in touch with him and asked him, could I get over? Initially, when she contacted me, she had asked to come over for a training camp, and I wasn't sure how serious she was, so I kind of just kind of passed on a few suggestions about training that maybe she could do, and then she replied back, no, I, I want to come there. So I said, wow, like, she's legit. Anyone who wants to you know, pack up and move across the world to pursue her ambitions has to be pretty serious, male or female. Uh, Rossi lives in Connecticut. I had to pack all my bags to be close to him and never in a million years did I think I, I would leave home to actually live in America. I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, I'd seen videos of her, but you don't really know until you're there in person. It's almost like we knew each other, but we didn't. So I think the trust was there from day one. I knew, I knew that Ross was the right man for the job. That was obviously really, really hard to leave my family behind. I'm a, I'm a real home. It's definitely tough at times, missing out and, and, and watching my niece and, niece and nephews growing up. But after each fight, I'm always home for two or three weeks. And I just love loved that time with, with my family after each victory. It was really tough. Um, it was a day I was dreading. Um, I knew it was coming. And I did travel over with her um, to get her settled in. I have to say, I was heartbroken when I was leaving her and, and, and worried about her and um, just very concerned about her being living in a different country, where, you know, surrounded by people that she didn't know and just leaving her on her own. This is someone who can hardly uh, make some toast, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how I've survived for these few years. I think I was more concerned about her chopping her fingers off, using a knife to cut up stuff for <laughs> ingredients and it was like, <laughs> it was a, a funny... <laughs> Uh, situation but um but yeah I, I think she kind of felt in the end that the, maybe the cooking end of things was a bit overrated so she was kind of ordering stuff in and just maybe making easy things for herself to eat 
it was definitely tough for her. I think leaving me behind for those for those um, few months, and but and here I am a few years later. I, I'm uh, um, I've done an okay job. <laughs> How long had you been over with Ross before you decided? that you were going to turn pro. For the first time in a long time, I was actually enjoying my boxing. The fire and the passion was back again for, for the sport. It was during that time where I decided to turn pro, so I sent Eddie, Eddie Hearn a message. But women's boxing was something that had been explored in the past, but had never really worked. She sent me a message and said, I think it's time for me. I feel like I can do a lot in the women's game. And I'd like a good promoter. I believe that's you. Would you be interested? And I thought, you know, I was a massive Katie Taylor fan. But commercially, I just wasn't wasn't sure about women's boxing. But I could not say no to Katie Taylor. So uh, her manager, Brian Peters, spoke to me. They flew over to the office that day. We went for lunch. And probably a week later, we were announcing her signing in, in Dublin. And then the journey began. That was a big risk because he didn't know what way this was going to go. Professional boxing and amateur boxing is completely different. I didn't really even realise myself at the time how different the two sports actually were. My style has even changed a lot since, uh, since turning pro. Amateur boxing is all about scoring points and working off a jab. Pro boxing, people love knockouts. They love a fighter. I, I think amateur boxing is like chess. Pro boxing is like war. There was definitely somewhat of a learning curve just as far as sitting down on your punches a little bit more, having a little bit more intent, staying in the pocket as opposed to touching and running and touching and being gone. It's a completely different ball game, um, completely different different sport altogether and I really didn't realise that when I actually turned pro. I did feel that there was something exciting about it. I wasn't kind of too sure. I, we, I didn't know anything about the professional game. And obviously, uh, we knew nothing about how to negotiate contracts or anything like that. So, Brian was a uh, great help. He wasn't at that time, I think, planning on getting on board, but I think he knew that I was just completely out of my depth. Pro, pro boxing is, is a different animal entirely to amateur boxing. You know, a lot of people call it the Wild West of sports. It's political, it's all about manoeuvring yourself into the right position, and it's about impressing crowds. As Eddie Hearn always likes to say, bums on seats is really important. If you don't sell tickets, it's very hard to get promoters to put you on their shows. We have so many women fighters now in, in the team and they wouldn't be on the team without Katie Taylor. She's the ultimate trailblazer. Katie has paved the way. We're in her shadow and going behind her. No one questions Katie being a female or a male. They just know that she's a brilliant boxer. And, and that's what we need our fans to do, is to follow that. When you signed up to work with Eddie Hearn as your promoter, how long was it until he'd set up your first pro fight? I had a meeting with him and three weeks later, I had my first pro fight. Making my, my ring entrance for the first time as a pro fighter was, was so, so special. I didn't feel under pressure to perform. I felt strong. I produced a great performance and a great victory. And, uh, yeah, just the start of, a, of an amazing journey. I remember her debut at Wembley. I'd just never seen anything like it. The, the ferocity, the variation of punches, you know, the body, the head. She was kind of given the second chance then of just kind of being lifted up out of the, the, the depths of, of kind of despair and, and, and maybe losing hope in, in, in her situation, just to be, you know, thinking that, you know, this is something new and exciting and yeah, I think the fire was kind of born in, 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 in her again for the sport. She's extremely driven, extremely motivated. She's very competitive. It's that drive that really does catapult her above a lot of her peers. It would be maybe an unstated ambition, but her ambition was to change professional boxing, but without compromising any of her own, um, you know, any of her own ideals. And um, that's exactly what she's done. My driving force behind women's boxing is led by those who inspire me. For me, the inspiration comes by just watching her shine. The career of Katie Taylor as a professional will go down. She will go down as the greatest female fighter of all time. So, first professional fight. Yeah. A memory from this one? Yeah, that's the first world title I won. That's the WBA belt. Um, I boxed against um, a girl called uh, Anae Sanchez. And um, I actually just remember from that fight, my mom jumping into the ring afterwards and lifting me <laughs> up and down. And, and I'm saying, get out of the ring, Mac, get out of the ring. <laughs> it's 
the mother's yeah. duty to embarrass yeah, the children. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah. Love it. That's a lovely memory. <laughs> and here is the second one. Yes, that's the IBF belt. Um, I, I beat Bustos uh, for that belt. Um, I think that was in New York. Um, I obviously became unified champion after that fight. Yeah. Where do you keep all of these? I actually have a small trophy room in my house where we where we, we keep them at home in Ireland. So, yeah, um, my mom loves going on. She cleans them. them. <laughs> yeah, she cleans them. Yeah, exactly. Well, what yeah. about this one? Yeah, that's the WBO belt. Um, I beat a girl called Rose Volante for that belt. Um, I actually, uh, I think I stopped her in the ninth round. It was a great performance. And I had three out of four belts at that stage, which was a great, great win. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Okay, now this one is a big one, and this is a very special one, I think. Yeah, yes, that's the famous green belt, the WBC belt. Um, I beat uh, Delphine Pursuant at Madison Square Garden, actually such an iconic venue. Uh, to have a chance to box in Madison Square Garden as a boxer is absolutely incredible. And, you know, uh, I had a visions uh, before that fight of, of, of uh, producing a spectacular performance, but I was so disappointed after that fight. I had all the four belts around me, but still sitting in the dressing room, so disappointed with my performance. Um, and it was such a controversial win as well. Um, but thankfully, um, I, 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 I had a rematch with Pursuant recently and um, was a lot, a lot more clear cut the victory was, but at the same time, so grateful that, that I did become undisputed champion. I had, I had all the bells at that stage. Yeah. Green, Irish, it was <laughs> made for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, last one. Another very special one yeah, for you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a ring magazine belt. That's a very, very special belt. There's not a, a lot of them around uh, boxing, but that's given to like the undisputed champion, the number one in, in, in each division. And um, I think the first person who actually received that, that belt was, was Jack Dempsey, I think, uh, back um, in, the, in the 1900s. So that belt has been going on uh, for such a long time now. Wow. Uh, such an historic belt. Did you ever want to be Jack Dempsey in your kitchen with the little gloves on? <laughs> well, my brother used to be Jack Dempsey, would you believe? I used to be Rocky Marciano just because Rocky Marciano was the undefeated one. <laughs> See, it was written in the stars. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up next on Driving Force. I just want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. I'd love to become a, a multiple weight undisputed champion. No, she definitely gives, you know, the young generation, certainly in Ireland, uh, the young girls to, to believe that. You know, you can accomplish anything. She's going to go down history as, you know, probably the greatest of all time. The professional boxing world seems to me that it could be full of sharks. <laughs> and cutthroat businessmen. Mm. Who was in your corner who, that they are just for you? My manager, Brian Peters, I got in touch with him when I was turning pro and I'm just so, so grateful that I have um, a manager who I can genuinely trust and um, he's so transparent with absolutely everything. Uh, you're, you're right, there is a lot of sharks in this game and um, I've had to turn down a, a lot of um, great sponsors over the years just because it didn't fit me and it would have been uh, very lucrative for me to actually um, partner with them. It would have been a lack of integrity, I think, because that's not who I am at all. I have to work with sponsors who actually uh, know who I am as a person, who I, who I can actually relate to as well. My least favourite part of professional boxing is coming to terms uh, with the fact that I've entered into the entertainment industry and not just the sport. You know, the entertainment in the industry that involves a lot of trash talking and um, and that just doesn't suit my personality at all. I'm probably the most boring person ever in a press conference. I, I never open my mouth. I'm always a and you're the one. nicest person in the press conference <laughs> in boxing. Yeah. <laughs> I know people don't actually remember what's, what's been said before the fights, but they do remember, remember the results. Mm -hmm. And that's all I'm concerned about. Um, so I don't actually mind losing the press conference as long as I actually win the fight on the night. In the ring, I've never seen someone switch from, you know, this quiet, charming individual to an absolute animal. She's soft-spoken and as polite and kind as you could meet outside the ring, but when she's in there, she's all business and she's coming to bring the pain when she can. She does her talking in the ring and, and through her achievements over the years, she has, you know, 
done now in professional boxing what she did for amateur boxing which is to to elevate the, the status of women in the sport to um to levels that previously were you know unforeseeable she's probably done what muhammad ali done for male boxing katie taylor has made it possible for a girl to dream that she can get to the top well she would beat some men i honestly believe that but that would never happen how have you learned to deal with being in the public eye, the whole thing of people recognising you in the street, yeah. the selfies, the social yeah. media and all that. Has it helped you being in Connecticut where you're out the way? One of the things I, I do love about being in Connecticut is that I, I'm completely anonymous out there. Although I do miss family uh, deeply and um, but when I am home, I, I really feel the love and support from, from the Irish people as well. And in some ways, they've actually watched me grow up in front of, the, of their very eyes. So I think that gives them um, a really connection, a strong connection to my journey. In Ireland, Katie Taylor is probably the best known sports person I, I know of. Everyone, everyone knows Katie Taylor in Ireland. Katie Taylor is an absolute machine. I actually watch most of her fights. Um, I was lucky enough to meet her not long after she won her gold medal at the Olympics. She's the target, she's the one that every girl boxer wants to beat and none of them can. She's well respected, she's a legend of the, uh, of the sport and she's going to certainly go down in history and you know, she definitely gives you know, the young generation, certainly in Ireland, uh, the young girls to, to believe that you, know, you can accomplish anything. She's going to go down in history as you know, probably the greatest of all time. I bet you always hear the Irish voices. Yeah. and see the Irish flags. I fought in Boston a, a few years ago and I, the, the whole stadium was full of Irish people um, in Madison Square Garden a couple of times. The crowd uh, was full of Irish flags as well. Yeah, they'll be so proud of you. Long yeah. may it continue. <laughs> Is there a time coming where there will be an all-female card. My last fight, um, there was uh, three female world title fights on a card of Terry Harper was Rachel Ball, and uh, they both won their, won their fights as well. We are coming to a stage where we're getting really high quality fights for the first time uh, in women's boxing history. That We are seeing the best, are fighting the best, and showcase the best of women's boxing. That's how we're gonna do it. When I first um, started uh, my pro career, we were getting paid pennies in comparison to the men. Bridging that gap has been incredible. We are really genuinely just recognised as as, uh, as boxers now, not, not as female boxers. It's not unusual anymore for a female fight to actually be on these cards. And um, where women's boxing has come in the last few years has been absolutely incredible. How important are male allies in this? It's, it's very, very important. I, I do owe a debt of gratitude to many male counterparts and who have uh, who have uh, paved the way for me, and all the the men that I trained with along the way, who uh, who just treated me like a like a boxer, not a female boxer, just but just a boxer. And the idea is to change everyone's attitude and everyone's opinion, isn't it? So um, I owe a debt of gratitude to, to the men in my life. In the boxing gym, we've always said like there's no colors like black, white, Puerto Rican, Mexican. Everybody's the same. You get respect from the work you put in. So same with a woman, she comes in, she's working as hard as all the guys, she's sweating with them, she's bleeding with them, it's just mutual respect right from day one. Forget women's boxing and men's boxing, it's just boxing. That's your platform, that's your opportunity, that's your stage. And how you perform on that stage is how you should be judged. And with Katie, you have a fighter that you can take onto any platform in any country around the world and you know everyone will fall in love with her. Just watch her once. You are the most successful female boxer in the world and you have opened so many doors for others to follow in your footsteps. What messages do you have for any young female boxers who are watching this? It takes immense courage to, to make that step across that, that threshold into a boxing gym because it, they can actually be very, very intimidating environments to be in and anyone who does already has my respect. It's okay to fail. It's okay to, to lose fights. I wouldn't be in the position I am in today without those failures. I just want to be involved in the biggest fights possible. I'd love to become a, a multiple weight undisputed champion. Um, I just want to continue to break down bar barriers. Yeah, it just paved the way for, for, for these next girls coming up after me. This is a, a girl that used to put her hair up in a bun to pretend she was a boy to go in to fight. Right? That's not normal. And look at what's happened through her involvement in that sport. Females, young girls can walk into any gym now with the confidence to go and shine in the sport of boxing. Katie has the ability, I think, to make people want to be better people when they're around her. I'm very proud of what she's achieved in her sport, 
but I think who she is as a person um, is, is what I absolutely love about her. She wants the next generation to come and surpass her, and not a, a lot of people would be willing to say that about themselves. You know, there's a lot of athletes who are just kind of focused on themselves, or Katie sees it as something bigger than herself. Part of us, for the team, is to is to maybe try and have that bit of a longer term view for her, but um, I think she just wants to continue breaking new barriers. I've played a small part of that moment, of that journey, and these are things that will go down in history. She's not just one of the greatest female fighters of all time, she's one of the greatest fighters of all time. If you can see it, you can yeah. be it. Yeah. And the visibility around women's boxing has increased so enormously, thanks to you. So, Katie, thank you so much for joining me. So it's been absolutely fascinating. You're an absolute shero of mine. <laughs> thank you. And I would be, hands up, one of these women who would have said, oh, boxing yeah. women, I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> thank um, you so thank much, you so Judy. much for joining me. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thank you.